In this video, we are going to talk about underfitting, overfitting, the fundamental trade-off, and the golden rule. Very, very important topics in supervised machine learning and bring all your attention here. Imagine that you're working on a supervised machine learning problem. You split your data into train split and test split. You carry out cross-validation on the train split. You have your mean train error from cross-validation and mean validation error from cross-validation. Now, you are in one of these situations. Either your train and validation errors are very high, that is, your accuracy is very low, or your train and validation errors do not align with each other. How do you diagnose this problem? To think about this, we are going to talk about four types of errors. E-train is your training error. E-valid is your validation error. E-test is your test error on the test split. And E-best is this best possible error you could get for a given problem. Now, we haven't really talked about E-best before. The idea here is that Suppose you are given the full data distribution, then what would be the error? Remember that in supervised machine learning, we are not usually given the full data distribution. We only have access to a sample or a subset of the data. And we want to find this mapping function given this small sample of the full data distribution. But in this ideal scenario, imagine that you have access to this full data distribution, then what would be the error in that case? Now, in real life, you're never going to be able to calculate this E best because you never have access to this full data distribution. So this is kind of an imaginary error that given this problem, what do you think uh, would be the best error for this problem? Let's talk about underfitting. Here I'm training decision tree classifier with max depth equal to one. I'm carrying out cross validation on X train and Y train. And here are our mean train error and mean validation error. What do we see here? Both train error and validation error are kind of high. So our accuracy is kind of low and this model in general is not a very good model. But the gap between train error and validation error is not that big. That is the difference between these two numbers is not that big. When our model is too simple like dummy classifier or decision tree classifier with max depth one, the model is not going to pick on some random quirks in the data, but it won't even capture useful patterns in the data. What we want to do at the end of the day is find this mapping function which relates X to Y, and we want to apply it on some new unseen examples. But if we are not able to capture useful patterns in the training data, then it's not going to perform well on unseen examples. So this model is not going to be very good in general. Both train and validation errors are going to be high. If we are in this scenario, this is underfitting. That is, we are not able to capture useful patterns from the data. In this scenario, both train and validation errors are kind of high, but the gap between them is going to be kind of low. So in underfitting scenario, our E best, our imaginary best error is going to be less than E train is going to be less than or equal to E valid. Our E train and E valid are going to be kind of close to each other. It might be possible that E train and E valid are equal, but usually your E train would be smaller than E valid similar to what we saw here. Let's talk about overfitting. I'm training a decision tree classifier with max depth equal to none. So it's going to expand our tree till all leaf nodes are pure. 
I'm carrying out cross validation on X train and Y train. And here are our mean train error and mean validation error. What do we see here? The train error is zero, which means that the model is able to classify each and every example from the training data accurately. But when we apply the same model on the validation data, then it's not that perfect. The error is quite high. In fact, the error is higher than we saw before in the underfitting case. So this number zero is not that helpful, right? This training error of zero is not that helpful because at the end of the day, we want to be able to apply this model on unseen examples and we want the model to work well on these unseen examples. But here we see that the training error is zero, but the validation error is high. So when our model is very complex, like decision tree classifier with max step none, then you will end up learning unreliable patterns in order to get every single example from the training data correct. Remember that when we use max step equal to none, the tree is going to expand till all leaf nodes are pure. So in this scenario, the training error is going to be very low, but there is going to be a big gap between training error and a validation error. And this scenario is called overfitting. We are relying too much on the training data. We are capturing some patterns from the training data, which are not real patterns, which are some random quirks in the data, because we are only given this uh, small subset or a sample of the data. And we are capturing some patterns from this data, which are not actually real patterns from the full data distribution. So in overfitting scenario, usually we will see that E-train is even less than the best possible error that that imaginary best possible error which is e best which is less than e valid in general you will observe that whenever you train a machine learning model there is some gap between e train and e valid e train is always smaller than e valid and so there is always going to be some amount of overfitting in your models just that you have to be careful and see when this gap becomes unacceptable. So the validation error does not necessarily decrease with the training error. Let's look at this a little bit more systematically. In this code, I am training decision tree classifiers with different depths. For depths in the range 1 to 16, I am carrying out cross validation. I'm storing mean validation error for each depth and mean train error for each depth in this results dictionary. And here is the plot for different depths. On the x-axis, we have depths and on the y-axis, we have error. And what do we see here? For smaller depths like max depth equal to one, both a mean train error and mean validation error are kind of high. So our model is not very good for smaller depths. And as we increase depth, what happens is that for larger depths, we see that the train error is close to zero. And for depths greater than 10, the train error is zero. That said, validation error is not really going down. Initially, validation error kind of goes up and then it goes down and goes up again and so on. And the gap between validation error and uh, train error here is quite large. So this is our underfitting scenario where the gap between train error and validation error is not that big and both, are, both errors are kind of bad. And this is our overfitting scenario where the gap between train error and validation error is quite large and train error is very, very low. So as we make our models complex, 
we start encoding random quirks in the training data, which are not really grounded in reality. Remember that what we care about at the end of the day is deployment error. We want minimum deployment error. We want our model to predict well on new examples. And this validation data is a proxy of test data, which is a proxy of our deployment data. So what we care about is validation error. We want our validation error to be as small as possible. And if we say that, okay, for these tests greater than 10, our training error is low. And so validation error has to be low. It's not really happening here because at this point, our model is capturing these random quirks in the data, which are not real patterns. And our model is not able to generalize well on unseen examples. This problem of failing to be able to generalize to the validation data or test data is called overfitting. The fundamental trade-off of supervised machine learning says that as you increase model complexity, your training error tends to go down, but the gap between validation error and training error tends to go up. And that's what we saw here, right? As we increase model complexity, that is, as we increase our depth of the decision tree model, our training error is going down and down, but the gap between training error and validation error is increasing. So that is the fundamental trade-off of supervised machine learning. Now you will also hear people calling this uh, fundamental trade-off as bias variance trade-off in supervised machine learning. Bias is this tendency to consistently learn the same wrong thing and high bias corresponds to underfitting and variance is this tendency to learn random quirks in the training data irrespective of the real signal and high variance corresponds to overfitting. So how do we pick a model that would generalize better? We want to avoid both underfitting and overfitting. So we want to find useful patterns from the training data, but we don't want to rely too much on it. We want to be consistent with the training data, but we don't want to overfit. So how do we do that? In this picture, I'm showing you a general scenario in supervised machine learning. On the x-axis, we have model complexity, and on the y-axis, we have accuracy. Note that I'm talking about accuracy now and not the error. Now for low model complexity, this far left in this plot, we are in underfitting scenario. Both our train and validation or generalization accuracies are kind of low. On the other end of the spectrum, where model complexity is very high, we are in the overfitting scenario, where training accuracy is very high, close to one, but generalization accuracy is kind of going down. Remember, this is our validation accuracy. And the gap between this training accuracy and generalization or validation accuracy is increasing. So what we want to do is we want to find this sweet spot. We want to find this middle ground where we are neither underfitting nor overfitting. We are finding some useful patterns from the training data, but we are not relying too much on it. How can we do that? It's not an easy question because in real life on real world data sets, your plots might not exactly look like this and you might not be able to clearly identify this sweet spot. A fairly common practice is to pick the model with minimum cross-validation error. For example, here are the results from our previous cross-validation experiments. In this case, what we will do is we will look at this mean cross-validation error column and we would pick the model, we would pick the max depth which gives us the minimum cross-validation error. So let's try to do that. In our case, the minimum uh, cross-validation is 0 0.185 at max depth 5. 
So we have picked this max model with max step five as our best model. Now that we have this best model, let's try it out on the test set. Remember that initially we have split our data. We are carrying out cross validation only on the train portion. And now that we have our best model, we can try it out on the test data. So let's do that. So I'm creating this decision tree classifier with max depth equal to best depth, which is five in our case. Now I'm fitting the model on the full training data. I'm not carrying out cross validation anymore. We have found the best uh, hyperparameter. We have found the best model using cross validation. And now that we have uh, this best hyperparameter, we are training our model on the full training data and we are evaluating it or we are assessing it on the test data. And what we see here is the error on the test set is 0 0.19, which is very similar to what we saw on the validation set. So this is good, right? The validation error gave us a good estimate of the test error. So do we really feel confident that this model would give similar performance when deployed? If our data would have been large enough, then we could have said that. In our case, we are still working on toy data. And so if you change the random state, you might get different results. So in this particular case, I won't feel very confident, but if your data is uh, of good size, you, you would feel confident at this point. Okay, so what we have been saying is that what matters is the test error and validation error. The training error doesn't give us a good idea of how our model will perform on new unseen examples. Now, even though we care the most about the test error, the test data cannot influence the training phase in any way. And that's the golden rule in supervised machine learning. What does that mean? Our test data is a proxy of our deployment data. That is our unseen examples. And if our training phase is influenced by test data in some way, that means that these examples are not unseen anymore. We are seeing these examples during training. So it won't be a good proxy of our deployment data, that is our unseen examples. So even though we care the most about the test error, don't train your machine learning models on the test data. Don't go to your boss and tell them that I'm getting these wonderful results on the test data. Because if you train your model on the test data, it's unlikely to perform well on new unseen examples when it's deployed. In general, you have to be very, very careful not to violate it when you develop your machine learning pipelines. Sometimes you will see even experts breaking the rule accidentally. And if you are interested, I have linked uh, a couple of news articles related to that in the lecture notes. So how can we avoid violating golden rule? Recall that when we split data, we put our test set in this chest lock. So the idea is that we only work on this green portion during our model development. And when our model is ready, then only we try it out on the test set. So here is our usual workflow that we are going to follow. First, we split our data. Then we select the best model using cross validation on the train set. Once we have the model, we only test it once on the test set. We use our test set for our final assessment. Again, there are many subtleties here and we will be visiting this again and again during the course. So that's golden rule.